Hey, what's up? Today we're looking at DeFi Llama, how to use it to find new protocols for lending and borrowing. And you can also use it for other stuff, but this video will focus on lending and borrowing just because the crypto market is heating up and you're likely going to be sitting on some stable coins as you're realizing some profit into the pump. So I'll go over some basic stuff that you can do using DeFi Llama how to find stablecoin yields, and the best practices when it comes to interacting with these DeFi protocols. And lastly, I'll also talk a little bit about the bull lever strategy, how you can use it alongside lending and borrowing, as well as more advanced strategy like yield arbitrage, or you could use different platforms like Euler, Contango, or even Camino on Solana to take on more risk and earn more yield in the process. And if you're new here, my name is Richard. I'm a yield farmer and investor. This channel mainly talks about passive income, liquidity pools, and DeFi. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check out the other videos as well. So let's dive right in. And like always, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research before actually interacting with these protocols. You should be looking into each of these protocols before investing. So the first thing we can do on DeFi Llama is to just click on the logo here to go to the homepage. And what we're going to see is this DeFi total value lock, right? You can see DeFi has been on an uptrend and it's not so much of a super aggressive uptrend of the last cycle. In my opinion, the current DeFi total value lock is much stickier. So there are a ton of new opportunities. And so if we scroll down, we see a bunch of different protocols, right? We see Aave, which is lending, and there are some different protocols related to staking as well. So if I want to know more about lending protocols, just click on this lending tab here, and it's going to send me into this link, right? Just on lending and borrowing protocols alone, it holds about $83 billion right now. And the first thing you guys can do is just to look at all of these opportunities, click into each one, and dive deeper for research, right? Most of you guys, if you have been in DeFi for a while, you've probably seen Aave, you've interacted with Aave, you can simply click into each link and see some of the history that is impacting the total value lock, right? And there are links that you can go directly as well. The website, the X link, you could cross check to see if everything is correct. For example, it sends me to this correct Aave website because there's a lot of mutual followers, right? And the link matches this Aave website. So what I want to do now is to open app. And here we can see a bunch of different opportunities. Right now we're on base. You can see I would be earning roughly 5 to 6% on my USDC right now if I deposit on base. And there are also new markets as well. For example, Plasma that has launched in the last few days. You can see the supply APY is about 9 to 10% for USDT. But a lot of this is in rewards, so you got to keep an eye on that. This is probably not going to stay very high unless more and more people start buying in this market. So that's a very basic way that you can use DeFi Llama. But what you can also do is that, let's say you're farming airdrops as well, and you want to dive deeper into other chains. Maybe you don't want to just stick with Ethereum or Base right? And you're able to see this tab up here. Let's say you want your funds to be on Hyperliquid. You could click on Hyperliquid. And then we're able to see like the different protocols that are on Hyperliquid, right? For example, Hyperland, I could click into that. And again, I want to be double checking links, right? Clicking the X account as well as the website. So I could see here Hyperland.finance. It matches the link that is sending me to. And then I could click the market tab and I can see a bunch of different assets, right? Some people believe that interacting with these apps on Hyperliquid is going to give you a chance for more hype airdrops. I'm not sure when that's going to come and how the point system works. But you can see here even the yield alone on USDT right now is around 30 something percent. So really high. And this comes from like a high utilization rate, right? If you guys are new to lending and borrowing protocols, the way it works is that the more people that is borrowing inside this pool, the higher the yield becomes for the lenders and the higher the borrowing cost becomes for the borrowers. 
The reason why is they want to incentivize people to pay back their loans. So we're not in a situation where a lot of lenders cannot withdraw their funds, right? You want to think about this kind of like a bank. You can see the current utilization rate is about 85, 86%. Similar to how a bank works, not all of your money that is inside the bank is actually held by the bank, right? The bank actually holds around like 15 to 20% of your funds. Some banks hold even lower. And what they do is they reinvest the money either into stuff like stocks and bonds or lend out their money that you gave them in the first place, right? And this works the same way. If there's like a bank run where suppliers try to withdraw a lot of capital, this is going to spike up the utilization rate and you might not be able to withdraw all of your funds at once, right? But the good thing about DeFi and most of these protocols is that a lot of them are over collateralized meaning that people still need to pay back their loans over time if they don't want to be liquidated. And if they're liquidated, you're still going to have the chance to withdraw, right? So that's something to keep in mind as well. There are some situations where you might not be able to withdraw all your funds at once. But again, the higher the utilization rate, the higher your yield is going to be. So the yield has been pretty great for Hyperland here. For example, there are a lot of times where the yield spikes above 10%. And the lowest it ever goes is about like three to four percent, right? So it actually doesn't show you the average APY. My best guess is between like 10 to 15 percent. So this is really solid on like a larger protocol. And that's another thing that we want to consider as well is the safety of the protocol. Usually the higher the total that we lock, the safer it is because more investors trust these protocols. If they don't trust them, then they will withdraw their money. And what we also want to keep an eye on is that the total value lock is relatively constant. For example, some new protocols might have a big surge in total value lock because they're typically giving new early users incentives. But we want to see if the total value lock is kind of consistent. For example, I could click into Morpho and you can see that the total value lock has been kind of growing over time, right? And another thing to keep in mind is that the longer the protocol has been around, usually the safer as well. If it's a newly launched protocol, you could expect more risk. So that's the first way that you can use this lending tab for. And if you're farming airdrops, it could be helpful to look for like lower TVL protocols on like a newer chain to try to get some points and airdrops. But make sure you guys read the security audits and you want to spread out your funds, right? Just like how you don't want to put all of your funds into one liquidity pool, you don't want to put all of your funds into one lending and borrowing protocol either, unless it's a very small amount of your portfolio. And another thing I want to show you guys is you could go in here and then type in yield and then filter for all pools here. And DeFi Llama is actually a really powerful tool. You could filter for concentrated liquidity pools as well. But for this video, let's focus on lending and borrowing. What I want to do is change this category tab to be lending. I can click only and it's going to pull all of those lending and borrowing opportunities, right? And you could change the attribute as well. For example, only stable coins, or if you want to look for liquid staking derivatives, you could do that. And for this example, I'm going to tick on stable coins. And then what I can also do is to filter by 30 day average APY, right? So this tab is actually really nice. And if I just zoom out a little bit here, you could actually see the 30 day APY chart. So this is really nice, but some of these stable coins might be really high risk, right? You want to look into each one. For example, if you want to yield farm with edge USDC, I have no idea what that is, but you could look into it to see if it's safe or not. But usually the higher the rewards, the higher the risk, just like yield farming, concentrated liquidity pools. If you guys want higher rewards, you will be taking more risk most of the time. So that's something to keep in mind. And you can filter by total value lock as well. Let's say you want to have at least 1 million inside these pools. You can see it's going to filter out a lot of stuff and it even shows like a logo here where some of these protocols don't have a token yet and that you could be farming points for a potential airdrop. But again, you want to do your own research. I have not researched a lot of these protocols. So you want to look into the specific protocol as well as the stable coin that you're buying and letting out because this could be an issue as well. For example, in the last cycle, there's UST, right? 
that's created by Luna and it DPEG. So this is something that you have to look into and kind of spread out your risk on as well. And if you guys are farming multiple protocols, then you could create like an Excel sheet or something to track your funds, right? But you can see the 30 day APY is around like 15 to 20% for a lot of these like larger pools. And if I remove the TVL filter, there are some riskier protocols, like for example, Teller, that is giving you a higher yield, right? And I've looked into Teller before. They're kind of a more niche lending and borrowing protocols. You could collateralize really low cap tokens, for example, even Pixel that I hold a lot of on Teller, but the borrow APY is actually really, really high. So that's something that you could do with Teller. And from what I know, it is more of a time-based loan. So there's no like real liquidation engine until the loan expires, then the protocol would liquidate. So it is a higher risk lending and borrowing protocol. And what I can do as well is filter by chain or filter by projects. For example, if I want to only look at Hyperlend, I can do that. And what you will notice is that sometimes it does not flag some of the stuff properly. So I could, for example, untick the stable coins to show every asset. You can see here, if I filter by 30 day average APY, USDC and UST zero is quite high at like nine to 10%. So roughly close to my estimate of like 10 to 15%, a little bit lower, but the data doesn't really update in real time. So we could be seeing higher than like 9% as well. But basically you could add a bunch of different protocols that you want to look for yields on. For example, Camino, you could do that as well. And then also filter by 30 day APY. You can see lending USDG or FDUSD, USDT has pretty decent yields as well. But this is just another way that you guys could look for new opportunities. And before I hop off here, there is a really popular strategy that you could use your crypto collateral for and earn yields on your staple fund. I call this the bull lever. Because typically you don't want to be sparring too much stable coins if the prices are trending down. This could put you at risk for liquidation, especially if you are borrowing a bigger amount. So for this strategy, what we're going to do is lend out assets like Ethereum or wrap Bitcoin, Coinbase Bitcoin on like a secure platform like Aave. And then we're going to borrow a stable coin that has a good borrow rate, stuff like USDC, USDT, DAI whatever that has a low borrowing cost. And instead of putting in a concentrated liquidity pool, like what I typically do for this strategy, if you want to take less risk, you could be yield farming with that stable coins in different lending and borrowing protocols. For example, even Reaver Finance has a lending function. You can see the lend APY is around like 12 something percent for the last 30 days. So you're actually going to be outpacing your borrowing costs. If you go back to Aave and we go back to Ethereum Core, usually if you want maximum security, it's a great idea to deposit on ETH mainnet. But if gas fees is an issue, you could use different LTUs like Arbitrum and Base as well. But here, if I go to like RLUSD, for example, you can see that the borrow rate is around 4.47%, right? So if I could beat this borrow rate, then I could be earning more yield on my capital. So I'll run through some example numbers here for you guys to see. For example, you deposit 100K worth of Ethereum, and this could be RAF stake ETH as well. So this is generating roughly 2 to 3% on your capital, right? And then when you're borrowing different assets, even stuff like USDC, let's say you borrow $50,000 here, but then the borrow cost is maybe minus 5 to 6%. But because you're borrowing only about like half of your capital and you're earning this 2 to 3% yield, this kind of cancels itself out, right? So if you're just staking ETH and then borrowing stuff like USDC or RLUSD, if you add it together, then the total yield would be 0%. But again, we have this 50K that we could use to earn yield on. Uh, let's say 15% APR because you're taking a bit more risk. Then because your initial capital is 100K, you're actually earning a net APR of around 7.5% on your capital, right? So this is a pretty popular way to boost yields on stuff like stake Ethereum, or if you're doing Bitcoin that is not generating any yield, right? You could be borrowing stable coins and then yield farm only into lending and borrowing protocols or yield arbitrage or Delta neutral strategies. So you don't actually put the actual capital at risk. 
besides some like protocol risks and stuff like that, that you could mitigate by doing research and actually spending the time to filter out the bad ones, then you're able to earn a nice APR on your capital. And let's just say the second example is 100K wrapped Bitcoin. And usually Bitcoin does not earn a lot of yield on these lending and borrowing protocols. So let's say you're doing the same thing, right? Borrowing 50K at around minus 5 to 6% APR. But then you use that 50K to generate a 15 to 20% APR. So then the net profit on this borrowed capital is around 10% APR. And on your initial investment is about half at 5% APR, right? So this is how you're able to generate a yield on your wrapped Bitcoin by borrowing some stable coins and then doing different strategies like Delta neutral yields to get a higher APR. And to achieve a 15% APR is actually not very difficult, especially if you have more time on your hand. For example, you could do some funding rate arbitrage as well on different perps platform. You could, for example, stake height and then short height this stake hype is going to generate a yield, right? And if the funding rate is positive on hype, which it often is in a bull market, then you're able to earn a nice APR on this strategy. But it does require some monitoring. You can't just like, you know, park your funds there. You got to look at stuff like the price movement and rebalance your strategy as the price move up if it's getting closer to your liquidation point, right? And there are different platforms as well, like Contango, where you could do yield arbitrage, put on some leverage. What it basically is, is you're depositing tokens that have a higher lending APY, and then you're borrowing tokens that have a lower borrowing cost, right? And then you use leverage, and you can see max leverage at 6.57 leverage. This current strategy is pulling a 120 something percent APR right now. But if you're taking less risk, then the APR would drop. And you can do that on different platforms like Euler or Camino as well. There are leverage strategies that you can run to earn a higher yield. But again, with these strategies, you are taking on more risk. I can make a video on this on what to look out for. But personally, I don't use a lot of leverage loops simply because I don't spend a lot of time like monitoring the supply APY or the borrow APY which you typically need to do for these cases, but it's something that you guys can consider if you're working with a lot of capital and you have more time on your hand and you want to stick with more Delta neutral strategies. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about DeFi and yield farming, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. Thank you once again for watching. I'll catch you next time.